Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm the Commerce Specialist. First of all, a huge thank from the bottom of my heart to all my subscribers who have made my journey very successful up till now. For those who have left a wonderful comments which keeps me motivated, just wanted to share a small detail with you. Like I was going through my channel analytics and I found that 80% of my viewers have not subscribed my channel. So when you subscribe uh, somebody's channel, that shows uh, your appreciation to the hard work. So a humble request to all those who are viewing my uh, videos, uh, I request you to please subscribe my channel. Uh, that's the minimum you can do to support my work and my channel. So thanks in advance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is on cost behavior. I've already made a video on cost and their classification. If you have not watched it, please watch that. It's very important. Today I'm going to talk about cost behavior, which is very relevant for students who are appearing in ACC F2 Management Accounting, CMA Part 1, SEMA and students of CA. So let's begin with the discussion. When we talk about cost behavior, actually we are talking about what will happen to the cost or a particular cost when activity increases when production increases or decreases how does the cost behave so let's have a look at each of the cost how they behave when there is a change in the production levels so when we talk about fixed cost by definition fixed cost are those costs which remains constant in the relevant range means as long as you are in the relevant range you are operating within your maximum capacity your fixed cost will not change so there are some important characteristics related to fixed cost which means they do not change as long as you are in the relevant range okay as production increases total fixed cost remains the same but fixed cost per unit decreases and vice versa means as production reduces total fixed cost still remains the same but average fixed cost per unit or fixed cost per unit increases if there is no production if there is no production we still incur fixed cost so it's not that let's say you have a factory and you're paying rent 10,000 so if you're not in a particular month if you're if there is no production that does not mean you will not have to pay rent you still have to pay rent so what I said here is uh, can be explained here let's if I talk about the units I'm talking about total fixed cost and I'm talking about fixed cost per unit which is also known as average fixed cost. So if I assume that production is one unit, total fixed cost your rent is 10,000. So 10,000 divided by one is still 10,000. But if you're making two units, your rent total fixed cost is 10,000. But when you divide it by two, your fixed cost per unit is five. Likewise, if you're making 1,000 units, your total fixed cost which is rent remains 10,000 but 10,000 when you divide by 1,000 it becomes 10. So uh, ladies and gentlemen what is important to note here as production is increasing from 1 unit to 2, 2 to 1,000 unit your fixed cost per unit is you know decreasing from 10 to 5, 5 to 10 per unit and because of this reason we say companies who operate at a larger scale they get economies of scale. economies of scale means the benefits enjoyed due to large scale production so see if a company makes only one unit their fixed cost per unit is 10000 but if you increase your scale of production if you manufacture more unit what happens your fixed cost per unit or average fixed cost becomes 10 the main reason is because your fixed cost per unit reduces your average fixed cost goes less and your cost of production goes less now if i look at the fixed cost this can be explained through a diagram so one diagram if I'm preparing uh, I'll do the curve linear cost later so if I prepare a diagram for total fixed cost as I said as production increases the total fixed cost remains the same so how it is shown in a diagram please pay attention 
always on x axis you take the number of units produced which is activity and here I'm talking about total fixed cost and we are assuming a uh, total fixed cost to be 10,000 so here we have 10,000 so even if production is zero you have fixed cost as 10,000 if there is no production no activity no manufacturing you still have to pay the rent that's why even at zero production you're paying rent 10,000 even if you make 500 units your rent is the same 10,000 even if you're making 4,000 units your rent is the same 10,000 unless you reach your maximum capacity let's say 20,000 any production level between zero and the maximum level let's say 20,000 your fixed cost will be the same so total fixed cost is shown by a straight line which is parallel to the x-axis but if I try to plot fixed cost per unit it looks like this here I'm talking about fixed cost per unit here you have units here you have cost which is fixed cost per unit 0 1 uh, 2 and let's say 1000 when you're making one unit your fixed cost per unit is 10,000 so let's say 10,000 is here on one unit your fixed cost per unit is 10 when you're making two units your fixed cost per unit is coming to 5,000 so 5,000 is somewhere here and when you're making 1,000 units your fixed cost per unit comes to 10 so let's say 10 is here and this is 1000 so it comes like this this is fixed cost per unit so it shows as production increases your fixed cost per unit comes down why the advantages of economies of scale as production increases your fixed cost per unit goes down and so is the average total cost now the next type of cost which you have I've already covered in my previous video of uh, cost classification variable cost variable cost are those costs which varies with the level of activity with the level of production with the number of units made so what are variable cost they do vary as activity means the number of units of production changes this delta sign is for change so some characteristic of variable cost as production or activity increases total variable cost also increases but variable cost per unit remains the same and vice versa if there is no production there is no variable cost means if there is no production there is no variable cost for example material and labor cost so if I'm not manufacturing I don't need material if I'm not manufacturing I don't need to pay the laborer so no production no variable cost more production more variable cost as production increases total variable cost will increase as production decreases total variable cost will decrease but variable cost per unit will remain the same so let's have a look at this uh, number of units I'm talking about one I'm talking about let's say 2 and I'm talking about 10 and your variable cost per unit I'm assuming to be 10 let's say material cost per unit is 10 and then I'm talking about total variable cost so if I'm making one unit my variable cost per unit is 10 1 into 10 total variable cost is 10 and here I don't have space but I'm writing variable cost per unit that is also 10 because 10 divided by 1 if I make two units variable cost per unit is 10 so 2 into 10 total variable cost will be 20 but 20 when I divide by 2 my variable cost per unit remains 10 if I'm making 10 units variable cost per unit is 10 10 into 10 total variable cost will be 100 and 100 divided by 10 units will still give me 10 so what we need to understand is as production increases see from 1 to 2 2 to 10 my total variable cost is increasing from 10 to 20 20 to 100 but as production increases my variable cost per unit remains the same one unit will still cost me ten dollars so how do i plot diagrams for total variable cost and variable cost per unit have a look if i make a diagram for total variable cost it looks like this always on x-axis i have the number of units y-axis I have cost so here I'm talking about total variable cost 
zero units one two and let's say ten variable cost per unit is when there is no production there is no variable cost please remember this where there is no production there is no variable cost so if you're not making there is no variable cost if you make one unit your variable cost is 10 total variable cost 10 so it's somewhere here if you make two units your total variable cost is 20 so on two units your total variable cost could be 20 here and if you're making 10 units your total variable cost will be 100 so let's say 100 is somewhere here okay so on 10 units so it is a line which is directly proportional at 45 degrees this is total variable cost so total variable cost is a line which is 45 degrees directly proportional to your production but if i try to plot variable cost per unit now here this is very interesting here I have x, this is y, here I have units here, I have variable cost per unit. If you look at this column, variable cost per unit is 10, no matter how many units I make. So whether I'm making one unit, I'm making two units, I'm making 100 units, my variable cost per unit is 10. So my variable cost per unit is also parallel to x-axis just like my total fixed cost so you need to remember the logic behind this after variable cost per unit we are talking about total cost total cost is very very simple total cost is basically the combination of total fixed cost plus total variable cost and diagrammatically it is represented like this Please understand, fixed cost starts from here, okay? So, this is my fixed cost, total fixed cost. And on top of it, actually the variable cost comes. So, from here to here, I have total fixed cost. This to this, this is total variable cost. And this is my total cost. If somebody asks you to give a graphical presentation of total fixed cost, simply make a diagram like this. This is understood. This intercept is your fixed cost. Above that is variable. This is variable. This is fixed. And this is total cost. So total cost will behave. Obviously, there is a fixed element and then there's a variable. Fixed remains whether you're making less or more units. But then if you're making more units, your variable cost will change proportionately. We also have something known as stepped fixed cost. These costs are the costs which will remain fixed for a particular range and after that there will be a step up means they will increase. The best example is like I can give you in a sales department and you know in sales department some people get fixed salaries, some people get commissions. So I'm talking about a typical commission structure. Have a look at this. What if we pay our sales uh, people if they sell from 0 to 100 units, they will get commission at the rate of $10 per unit. If they sell more, say from 100 to 200 units, they'll be paid at a commission of $20 per unit. If they are high achievers, if they sell more than 200, say up to 300 units, they will be paid commission at the rate of 30 per unit. And if it is, let's say, uh, 300 to 400 units they'll be paid at a rate of 40 per unit so how this is plotted in the diagram have a look at this I told you on X axis we have units Y axis we have the step fixed cost so from 0 to 100 units the Commission is fixed at $10 so let's say this is $10 so anything from 0 units 1, 2, 3, 4, right up till 10, your commission is $10. See, $10. So those who sell more than 100, sorry, it is from 0 to 100. 0 to 100, the commission is $10. More than 100, let's say 100 to 200, the commission is 20. So when it's more than 100, the commission goes right up till 20, and it remains 20 right up till 200 units. See, 200 units. If it is more than 200 to 300, let's say around 300, 
this will become 30. So if it is going beyond 200, your commission will increase to 30 and will remain the same right up till 300 units. So if you look at, it looks like steps, steps of a building. Can you see this? So we call it stepped fixed cost. Stepped means it looks like step. Fixed means the commission is fixed between 0 to 100. It's 10. Between 100 to 200, it's fixed. How much? 20. Between 300 to 200 to 300, it's fixed. How much? It is 30. Stepped fixed cost. The last category, which is one of the most famous one, we call them curve linear cost. Curve linear cost could be like this. Just like variable cost, for example, if you look at this, it goes up. Because the more you buy, the cost will go up. But because of quantity discount, it may have, you know, some reduction in total cost because of quantity discount. So it goes up proportionately. But let's say after, let's say 5,000 units, the company starts, if you're buying more than 5,000 units, every unit you don't pay at the rate of 10, but all successive units after 5,000 units, you're paying not at the rate of 10, but maybe at the rate of 8. That's why you can see this tilt. And this is the curve because of the quantity discount. So guys, if you have any other questions relating to cost behavior, feel free to leave a comment. I will reply to you as usual. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis. Please share this video with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.